how much should you spend per lead? In this episode, we're going to actually give you a different question that you should be asking instead of that one. We're going to be talking about how most businesses are not doing some of the things that we're talking about in order to get these numbers. And we actually have a straight up solution for you on how to get that number. How much can you actually afford per lead? We're going to walk you through our calculator. Check it out. This is the Marketing Natives, providing actionable ways to grow, improve, and succeed in your business. And now, your hosts, Christian and Aaron. All right, so I want to ask Christian, I think we've talked about this, but um, let's just, I guess, jump into this first. The question is, or the title of this episode is, how much should you spend per lead? But really... That's not the question you should be asking. So we'll talk about that here in a second, but I just want to um, just hear nonchalantly, like, have you heard about that prior to this document? I don't think so. Okay. So just to kind of give context, this is something new that I've learned probably within the last six months or so, just from like a course that we bought and then also just listening to other people teach and understanding the numbers, which we'll talk about here in a second. But it's the question should really be, um, how much am I willing to spend per lead? Because if you if you think about it, like every time we've talked to a business owner and we've done this for ourselves, it's been oh we can get our your lead cost for three to three dollars or or thirty or a hundred or whatever, and that's what the businesses want to know. But instead, we should be asking them the question, okay, how much could you spend to still be profitable? And the reason for that is like okay, so Christian has a I don't know what kind of company do you have, Christian? I have a water bottle company. Okay. You stole my idea. He was looking at the camera, guys, for those listening on the podcast. So Christian has a water bottle company, and it's $10 to make this water bottle and do everything. And he makes $5 off of it. Well, okay. If he gets a lead or he gets a customer, I guess, for, let's just say, $6, well, he just lost money. Okay. But if you know your numbers well enough and know that, okay, for every time Christian sells one water bottle, that person comes back every two or three months and we'll buy two more. So they made $30 and you're like, okay, I'll spend $6 or $7 to make 30. So now it just becomes a numbers game of like, okay, how many people can I get in to buy the $6 water bottles to get $30 purchases later on? Um, Versus just saying, okay, if I was to tell that to Christian, he's like, no, I can't do that. I'm not profitable. Like if I get $6 leads or $6 purchases, then I can't, like, it's not going to work for me. I can't run ads. I can't make this work because it's just, it's not profitable. Um, so then you have to work the numbers differently. And it's also like, if, if Christian says he's got a water bottle company, and let's just say I have a, I don't know, a cooler company that's like very similar um, and same price point and everything. And Christian says, okay, after $5, I'm not going to spend anymore because I can't acquire that lead. And I'm like, I'll spend $10 because... If I spend ten dollars and I still know I make thirty, then that's fine because I'm still profitable at that point, and I get all of the leads that Christian would have got because he stopped spending at five, and I can go five more dollars. So I get everybody who was at six, seven, eight, nine, and ten dollars because he wanted to quit earlier. When they so asked. you're you're basically going after the lifetime value of that customer mm-hmm. that purchases that first time. Yep, absolutely. And how, so how do you determine that once this person buys, they will purchase again. So you have to make, if you've never done this before, like for example, you're a brand new business. This is the only time you ever have to figure this out. If you're a brand new business, you have to make an estimate of like, okay, my competitors, or I've done research and every you know six months, somebody loses it. They love their water bottle, but they lose the water bottle because it's camouflaged. I don't know. Then you would base it off of that. But if you're an existing business, you should know. So like Christian's been selling water bottles for 10 years. I figured that out just a second ago. You should know, okay, I have a customer list and I got a list here of like Becky and Becky's purchased 20 times. Well, Becky's spent a lot of money with us, but there may be 2,000 other people who have purchased a water bottle at least twice. So then you know, okay, I know that on average, the customer is going to spend two to three times on the water bottle. Now I can run my numbers and figure that out. So you do have to do some research and you have to find out how much it costs for you to make the product and how much to be profitable. But then you also need to figure out, okay, how many times does this customer stick around? And then you start to run numbers, which 
as we're talking about on a video and a podcast, it's a lot. And we'll get into this a little bit later, but um, it's uh, you guys are probably like, oh, dang, there's a lot of numbers. I'm driving around like I don't understand that. But the point is from number one here is that you should be asking the question, how much am I willing to spend to acquire this customer? Um, I'm trying to think of, a, is there any big companies that you can think of that just, they just spend so much money on advertising? I'm thinking like Coca-Cola, Apple. Apple doesn't really. Let's just say Coca-Cola. I'm trying to think of other big companies that spend a lot. Pizza Hut spends a decent amount, um, I'm assuming. Um, I'm trying to think of the, those companies that are just like, they're everywhere. Like, like everywhere you AT&T. look. AT&T. AT&T, for sure. They know that they're going to like reap the benefits of it long term because they know how much they can acquire a customer for so that's what we wanted to talk about here like that's a does it make sense i guess the how much should i be willing to spend per lead yeah absolutely i think it forces um i think if you go the other way around how much should you spend per lead someone's definitely looking for that right now and mm-hmm. that you probably landed on this podcast mm-hmm. um but I, I would say like yeah that that would be the easiest route right for mm-hmm. you to type that in online mm-hmm. um and then for online give you some averages mm-hmm. and then you just go off of that mm-hmm. instead of um i guess rephrasing the question and saying how much am i willing to spend per lead forces you to deep dive into your numbers mm-hmm. um and look at okay how much can you really you know are willing to spend um, instead of some average number that Joe Blow is telling you over here on on this blog, right? One's internal and one's external, and which I think is important to get some averages. Yeah. But at the same time, and the end at the end of the day, like your business is unique from mm-hmm. any other business. And by asking this question and by following the cost calculator that we're gonna talk about here in a second, ooh, Easter egg, <laughs> um, then it's gonna give you a very accurate number. I mean, obviously you might you know, average some of those numbers out, but, Mm -hmm. um, it's going to give you a a better number than what, you know, any other average number is going to give you while you're searching for, Hey, how much should I spend per lead for a marketing website? Mm -hmm. Hey, local business owners. If you're ready to grow your business online without having to work more in your business and you can spend more time on it, we created a free training on how to attract, qualify, and convert more leads online. It's 38 minutes. It's going to take a little bit of your time, but it's going to have a huge benefit. It's completely free. Make sure you click below in the description, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on the podcast, everything's there that you need. Go grab the training now. All right. Number, the second thing here is it's kind of a a piggyback or like a a 1A or 1B, but it's know your numbers. And there's actually, I was a video I was watching and this guy knew his numbers so well that he was willing to float because he had the cash flow and because he knew his numbers to float 18 months. So he would acquire a lead knowing that on average, they're going to buy within 18 months, but he'll float that cash for 18 months knowing that, okay, if they spend $1, um, eventually they're going to spend an exuberant amount of money with him. Um, another guy in the kind of like online world that's kind of high end, like Sam Ovens, his model, and just completely re- irrelevant to whatever else you guys are listening to, is just interesting. He has a $2,000 course that he breaks even on, and actually, actually he loses a little bit of money. But then once he gets somebody in there, he knows how many people it takes, and he makes profit, 100% profit, on a six thousand dollar course so he knows like okay if there's four people who come in two of them are going to buy the six dollar course so he'll spend you know two thousand dollars each to acquire people no problem to buy that course knowing he's going to lose money like that's the most expensive lead magnet i've ever even heard of but he'll he'll spend two thousand dollars to acquire that customer and break even just so he can sell them on a six thousand dollar course and now he has a 40 he'll probably do like 80 million dollars this year or something it's crazy that is crazy Um, So do you think that businesses need to look into things like that whenever, you know, maybe you run the numbers and you, you know that, you know, on a straight up, I spend this much money on advertising. I'm not going to make, you know, enough to make it profitable. Mm -hmm. Um, Is the next step figuring out, okay, so if I get enough people here, I can actually move these people towards like some other funnel or something to purchase this other thing that I offer. I mean, is that the next logical thing or is it more of a, 
okay, let's figure out how to streamline this to make Yeah, it you should have a, like, his is very advanced. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. And same thing mm. for the guy who's cash flowing it for 18 months. I don't know very many people who can spend that much money and, and cash flow themselves and not make a cent for 18 months. Those are very successful businesses. So let's bring it back down to a local business. Um, and not that local businesses are not successful, but the point is like, we want to get paid. <laughs> um, but you know, you need to have like something that's going to be profitable. So it's the question again was how much am I willing to spend per lead and still be profitable? Cause we want you to be profitable. You just may not be profitable until month two, but we're not saying much longer than that. Like how can you bring in like Christian's water bottle, you bring in a person and then you know that, okay, by this point, I'm going to be profitable. If it's going to make him wait six months, that I don't think very many people can ride that wave for that long because you're like, six months, it's a long time to wait. And then if it fails, now I've leveraged myself into a hole. So they think the question is, and if you do this correctly, you're still going to do better than most people, which is how much am I willing to spend per lead and still be profitable? So although I may be willing to spend 10, I'm not profitable there. I'm willing to spend seven, but Christian's still only willing to spend five. So I still have a little wiggle room. And if I acquire them for seven, it's still profitable. So I think it needs to be a straight streamlined approach to, okay, you want to at least make your money back because you need that cash flow to go back and reinvest in the business. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and to make this work, it's all about that profitability. So you've got to know your internal numbers because uh, for us, we're all pretty much all labor. I mean, we spend a lot of money on software, which I have found out, um, but it's also labor. So how much labor time does it take for you to deliver the product? You're like, oh, it just costs me, Christian thinks, $5 for the water bottle. But if he didn't factor in like labor and delivery and everything else, then it's like, oh, it's actually a $7 water bottle. Um, so you got to figure out those numbers. Uh, I think service-based is a little bit easier because it's just labor and you can figure that part out. Product is probably equally as easy, but this calculator we're going to show you here is literally for a service-based business. Um, Ecom would probably be a little similar. Maybe we'll do another episode on that. Um, we can talk to you guys about that through our sales accelerator, but this is for leads. So let's say Christian has a high-end product, um, not a water bottle. Let's say he has a consulting company for um, websites and it was for you to go through his program, it cost $16,000. Okay. Christian's direct cost of his labor and like, let's just say software and people who are helping him on his team is $6,000. So at that point, his client value here is $10,000 because he's got direct costs. So he spent $16,000 and, and Christian stopped me here too because I know people are going to be able to watch what we're doing on the calculator for YouTube, but for the podcast, let's, I want to make sure it's super easy. So a $16,000 product, he has $6,000 in expenses. His client value is $10,000 of profit, I guess. Um, the, the kicker, though, is that after that, Christian has all these amazing templates that people want, and he's going to give them, a let's just say, a I don't know, like a landing page package, and it's 30 landing pages, okay? And he sells them that for $3,500. So now Christian's lifetime value of this customer is $13,500. So that's a lot of freaking money, okay? Um, for this example, I don't think people are going to make that payment over one time. So I just said, okay, how many different payments is it going to take Christian to make this? So let's just say for his, um, $16,000 consulting, they make it over two payments and then the additional purchase is $3,500. So he has a total of three payments monthly first or the month one cash flow positive goal for this client again um, you can put in a number here the desired ROAS so ROAS is like return on ad spend so we want to make 200 percent return on ad spend um, from this client the month one cash flow positive goal for the client means that he has to he has to make three thousand dollars three thousand thirty two but three thousand dollars on that to be profitable um, or have a 200 percent return so, again, working off this calculator, which we'll share the calculator with you guys, the de desired cl client cost per acquisition means that you want to spend roughly $1,600, $1,666 for Christian to acquire a customer. Okay, he can spend that much. Hopefully, you've gotten it for less than that, but you can spend up to $1,600 to acquire this customer and still make double your money. You're like, wow, I, could, that's a, I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, so now the next thing is 
figure out how many leads. I, I always just do the round number of 100. So for every 100 leads, how many sales can Christian have? And it's like, okay, well, Christian has a high-end ticket product. Um, you should know how many closes you have. So let's say Christian talks to 100 people. Let's say 75 of them are like not ready to buy right now. The other 25 are qualified. Some of them don't have the money. Some of them aren't ready to buy now. But then this month, he closes three sales. So super low conversion rate. He's got a lot of people in the pipeline that he's still talking to. Let's not forget about the fact that those people are ones who are going to buy later. Um, just as a tidbit of information, um, 85% of people, I think, it's, no, it's like 55% uh, of people will never buy from you ever. And then I would say another 20 or 30% of those people will buy in the next 90 days. And they might, they might buy from you or somebody else. And then you got a small percentage of people who are ready to buy now, which is why Christian has that sale of $3. So now each one of those leads is worth $300. So those, I mean, that's a good chunk of money. He spent $2,500. That's a number you got to decide for yourself. Um, we just put that number in there. His cost per lead was 25. And then we try to get it for a little bit less, but his cost per lead was $25. Um, to be able to be profitable. And then we go down to the second part here about profitability. So this is where you gotta know what you're, <laughs> you're looking at here. Um, so the cost of a product is $16,000. He spent 2,500, but he had three sales, so he made $45,500, which is a good chunk of money. Um, there's a lot of other things you gotta factor in here, um, like actual gross profit and net profit. Um, but technically his return is absolutely insane. Uh, if you change it to a less high ticket item, let's just say we changed it to a $500 item. Direct cost should not be 6,000. Let's say it's 250. Okay. He wants to acquire a customer now. So I changed the cost of the product from 16,000 to 500 and he has 50% margins. I changed it now to $250 and whoops, they don't have an additional purchase of that. I put 3,500 in additional purchase. Let's say it's a thousand. Whoops. Lifetime value of that customer is 1250 cash flow positive client per month. So he's only going to make $82 off of it. So now he's got to figure out, okay, I got to get a higher conversion rate. If it's $500, you should have a higher conversion rate. And then we'll go into questions here in a second, but let's say, 30 people okay now we know all right cool i can still make a decent amount of money okay so we went over a lot here i did a lot of talking for the podcast part in the video you may have seen some numbers and you'll be able to play around with this yourself but what questions as you're going through that christian i know that there's probably like oh gosh this is like it's a lot right it's just but as you go in there and play around like i was doing this earlier with ryan it's um it's a lot of playing around with this. The webinar the app you don't necessarily need, but there's a lot of playing around with your numbers. But if you do know them, then it makes it very easy. Uh, you'll only want to mess with the white numbers right here, not the yellow. But did following along or seeing those numbers change, like did those add up for you though, Christian? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the only, I would say my biggest question or the biggest unknown would be the total ad spend. Um, well, I guess it depends on how much. So like if your desire, like if Christian wanted to make, let's say you wanted to make 500% return, okay, then you know that, all right, my cost per acquisition is $16.47. I, that's what I want to get them for, okay? I know that I need more leads to make that happen. So this is saying that I got to get a cost per lead for $25. Probably doable, but if you could drop it, Fifteen hundred. Can you still get a lead for fifteen dollars and still be profitable? Yes, you can. So you can play around with your numbers and figure out. Okay, for every hundred leads, I'm going to close thirty deals. Then my cost per lead is worth seventy five dollars. So basically, the that ad spend. You want to make sure that you match the desired client CPA with the desired lead CPA. Uh, so desired client cost per acquisition is like how much I want to acquire the customer for. It's how much I can spend to get the customer to give me the money. The cost per lead 
is how much you want to spend um, to acquire, to get a lead. So that knowing that you're going to get 20 sales. So let's say for the cost per lead is $15 and you want a hundred leads, you're going to spend $1,500 in ad spend, right? Okay. From that, you know that you want, you're going to get 20 sales. Your cost per value per lead is $50. So you could technically spend up to $50 to acquire that lead. Got it. <laughs> it's, I know it's a lot. <clears throat> I guess the whole point from this is that you this will help you figure out the numbers of your desired amount of money that you want to spend or that you want to make. Let's say, again, 500% is a lot. Let's just say you just wanted to double your money. How much could you spend to acquire that customer? And then what's your total goal? So like if Christian wants to make $10,000, okay, how much does he need to spend to be profitable or to get the amount of leads that he needs and still be profitable? Um, this number needs to change to 1500, which is the profitability. He still makes $8,500. So from a $500 product and you make 20 sales, you got a hundred leads, I guess that came in and you got 20 sales and your product is $500. You still, after everything, you still made $8,500, which instead of making 200% profit, you made 566. So to your point, Christian, okay. What if I drop my ad spend? Now I don't need to spend fifteen hundred because my goal is to make two hundred. So, um, here we go. Cost per lead would have to be seven fifty, and I know I'm gonna have less leads. Okay, so I only have to have a ten percent close rate to still be at almost at two hundred percent profitability for you. So I got a hundred leads. I convert ten of them. And I can spend seven hundred and fifty dollars to acquire those customers, and I can still make thirty five hundred dollars. That's, I mean, that's per month. I guess we're looking at this per month. But if you wanted to make more money, you're gonna have to spend more money in advertising. But realistically, if you were selling your five hundred dollar package, whatever it was, you could spend seven hundred and fifty dollars in ads, assuming that these numbers are all correct and you had a good profit margin. You could spend seven hundred and fifty dollars in ads. And make $3,500 profit from it. Um, just because you know that your cost of product is $500, direct costs are $250, and then you know that after they purchase that one time, they're going to spend another 1000 with you. So basically, every time a new customer comes in, they're worth $1,200 for you. So I know that was a lot. It's, a, it's something to play around with, and it's there. maybe we'll have a little like note section up here of like, okay, this is the things to play around with, but... I guess for the video and for you guys here is that your numbers are going to change. Just change the white boxes, play around with things, figure out, okay, how much should I spend on advertising? How much should I spend to acquire? It's like, what's your goal? What's you, what are you trying to hit and what are your numbers? But this isn't a end all be all in the sense that you do this once and then you're done. It's like this, you need to constantly be looking at it. How can you become more efficient? Like how can my direct costs go down from 250 to 200? And then how does that affect everything? So this is like a good starting point to give you, I guess, a goal to hit towards your numbers. Somewhat helpful. Yeah. In interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's more so the fact that it's um, trying to get you versus Christian saying, I'm going to sell these water bottles and I want to sell a thousand of them. And you have no other numbers to base it off of versus okay, I've plugged everything in and now I know that, okay, I, this is how much advertising spend I should spend on it. Bueno, clear-ish. Clear as mud. Clear as mud, as they say. Um, so the calculator will definitely be in the show notes and in the description for YouTube. Make sure you guys go grab that, play around with it. Um, make sure that you hit share or you copy this and don't um, edit the one that we have because that would just mess it up. So make sure you share. We'll give the description for that. All right, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of The Marketing Natives. I know this was a different episode, um, but it's a constant question. And honestly, I want to use this video for uh, future reference and how we can get better too for explaining our calculator. But I think it will also be helpful for you to understand your numbers and where to plug it in. So hopefully you got a lot of value out of that. If you've been listening for a while, please make sure to leave us an honest rating review on Apple Podcasts. Um, and also, if you are not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe, whether it's on Apple Podcasts or any podcast platform. 
or YouTube. We put out weekly content to help you guys grow your business online for local businesses. Um, and also, as just a side note, if you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we will give you a shout out on the podcast. All right, see you guys. Have a great week. The Marketing Natives Podcast is a production of Bit Branding.